Okay, let's look at how we can style our table with CSS. So open HP 8-3 in your Chapter 8 student files. And if we view this page in a browser, it currently looks like this. We are going to use CSS to change the appearance of this table. Now remember in the previous tutorial, I told you that we should not ever do this. Uh, we did that so that we could see the border while we were typing the tables and first learning how to configure them. But this would not pass W3C validation because this needs to be done in our embedded or CSS. So let's delete that and then come back over here. And if we refresh the table, it takes away all of our borders. We are going to add those borders back, but we're going to add them back with CSS. Okay. So in our style section, the first thing that we want to do is select the table and we'll say margin auto. That's going to center our table. We're going to give our overall table a thick border. So we'll say five pixels solid and we'll use that dark blue color that we use for this website. And then let's set our width to 600 pixels. Okay, so let's take a look at those changes that we made. And when I refresh, now our table is centered and we have a dark blue border. Okay. Um, next, we are going to configure the TH, which is the table headers, and the TD, which is the cell data. So basically, we would be selecting the specialty coffee description price and then all of these little individual cells in this table. And to those, we are going to apply a thin border. So we'll say border one pixel solid, and we'll use that same dark blue color. And we're going to add a little bit of padding just so there'll be some extra space around. We'll have some um, white space around our text. And then let's change our font to Arial. All right. So let's see what changes have made to our table when I refresh. All right, it looks a lot different now, right? Okay, but notice we have, it looks almost like double borders. That's because it draws a border around each individual cell. Each TH or TD has its own individual border. And that looks kind of weird, right? <clears throat> so what if we wanted to get rid of that? Let's go into our table selector that we already created. And we can change the border spacing to zero. If we change border spacing to zero, then it's these um, lines are basically going to merge into one. Okay, so now it's actually a two pixel border um, because it's a one pixel on the inside of this one. It's a one pixel on the inside of this one, so on and so forth. Okay, I believe you can also use a border collapse. Um, and that would remove the extra spacing between those borders. Okay, now let's do some things with the caption. So we can target that caption by using the caption as a selector. And let's change its font family. Let's choose a Verdana font. Let's do a font weight of bold. No, nope, font weight, bold. I missed a semicolon here, so I'm going back to add that. And let's change our font size, make it a little larger at 1.2M. And then we'll have some padding on the bottom so we have a little extra white space below our caption, 0.5M. All right, let's refresh that and see what we have now. So that's going to change this text up here. And yes, now it's starting to look uh, more organized and more cohesive. Okay, um, let's experiment a little bit. So let's try changing our TDs and THs. Um, we're going to remove this border style to see what happens to our page. Um, instead, let's do border style none. We're going to leave our padding and we're going to leave that aerial. So we changed the border to border style none. And let's see what happens when we refresh. All right, so it removed all of those inside borders. 
Now what we're about to do is basically the same thing twice. We're going to look at two different ways that we could configure to have alternating rows of a gray shading. Um, so because um, we're basically duplicating this entire project up until this point, let's do a file save as. Save it in your folder as HP. Dash four. I'm going to save mine on my desktop. Okay, so we've got HP 8 dash four and an HP 8 dash three. And we don't need the HP dash four open right now. So I'm going to close that and then I'm going to go back and open HP 8 dash three. Okay, and then later I'll show you what to do with 8 dash four. <laughs> okay, I hope that made sense. We just made a duplicate of 8 dash three. And then we came back to work in 8-3. Okay, so one of the ways that we could create a alternating row of a different color is to use a class. We've used classes before. So in our CSS, we could create a class called Alt Row. And again, you could call it whatever you wanted to. But we're going to set a background color of a gray color. Um, e A, E A, E A. Okay, is that gray? E A E A E A. Okay, so now on our TR tags, we're going to assign this class to every alternating TR tag. So our first TR is not going to have the class, but our second TR is. And our third TR is not going to have the class, but our fourth TR is. Okay. Now let's refresh it and we should have some shading here. And there you go. We just have some light shading on e um, every other row. Okay. Now that's one way we could have done this. Applying the shading, we could have applied a class and then came in and applied that class to every row that we wanted a shading. But I bet there's an easier way. Okay. So we're finished with 8-3. Let's go ahead and close that. And then let's reopen that 8-4 that I had you save. And it is just a duplicate of where we left off earlier. So if we view this in a browser, it currently looks like this, okay? And we are going to make that shading appear using an alternate method. If you look on page 383 in your book, there are some structural pseudo classes that can be used to apply um, CSS styles to the first of type. So the first of type could be like, the first TRs or the first TDs. We could do the first child. We'll talk about children um, and parents and, and all that when we get to JavaScript. We could do the last of type, which would apply to the last thing in an element, the last child of an element. Again, we'll talk more about that in JavaScript. Or the nth type of an element. So you could apply the nth type to either odd or even, um, or even a specific number um, of a particular element. Okay, so in this project, we do not have those alt, that alt row class. We have not applied that, um, but we are going to use this nth of type, okay? So we want every other row so do TR, because those are our table rows, colon, nth of type, right here. And we're going to put even in parentheses. So that's saying every even row, we want to apply that background color of EA, EA, EA. Okay, so see how this is a lot easier than creating a class and then going and applying the class, especially if our table had lots and lots of different rows, because we would have to apply that class. If we were using the class method, we would have to apply it to every row. But in this case, it's just going to find every even row and apply that background color. Okay, 
We can even apply something to the first row. So our first row is basically um, the heading, the description, coffee price. So maybe we want that to stand out some. So let's say go to the first row by saying TR first of type. So the first instance of a TR, and we want to change the background color to that dark blue. And we'll set the color to this EA color that we use that light gray. Okay, so this is going to target the first row in our table and apply this formatting. So let's see what happens when I refresh my browser. Pretty cool, huh? And that was super easy for us to do. 